Hi, and welcome to this video on theories of counseling and pathology. I'm Kristen Kinsevich, a doctoral student at Regent University in the Counselor Education and Supervision program. This video will cover transtheoretical elements of counseling, core elements in all counseling theories, psychodynamic theories, cognitive behavioral theories, humanistic theories, postmodern theories, and Christian integration. Family systems theory will not be covered in this video as I'll make a separate marriage and family systems video later on. The trans theoretical elements of counseling are those things that are true in all of the different aspects. No matter what your theory is, um, these are kind of the core elements of what counseling is. And this is adapted from Prochaska and Norcross Systems of Psychotherapy, um, their seventh edition published in 2010. So first, all um, theories have some idea about processes of change. And those things are really true about humans, no matter what your theory is, we're all going for some type of change if we're doing counseling. Counseling also um, has a common element of consciousness raising, raising insight or awareness. Every theory, no matter what your orientation, is based in wanting to do that. Catharsis is another element of counseling that is trans-theoretical. All of the theories would have some element of um, valuing just talking and catharsis and, and seeing that as a helpful um, strategy for change. Personal choice is another element. Now, all of the different theories might see that a little bit differently, but there is just a general um, truth that we all have some element of choice. And also that there's environmental stimuli that impact us. So no matter what your theory, um, certainly you would understand that we all live in an environment and that has something to do with how we feel and think and act. And then the therapeutic relationship obviously is central to the counseling process. And no matter what your theoretical orientation, you're gonna have some dynamic that is formed between two people sitting in the same room together. Now, all counseling theories have five common things. And this is adapted from Jones and Buttman in um, 2011, Modern Psychotherapies. And um, so we're going to look at all five of these things for each theory. So there's a historical context, obviously, with key figures. There's a view of personality or humanity. There's a view of pathology. There's a view of health. And then they have therapeutic strategies to move a person from pathology to health. So we're going to look at all five of these areas now. For psychodynamic theories, this obviously was developed in the late 1800s to about the 1950s, so that's the historical context. And some key figures include Freud, Adler, Erickson, Kohut, and Winnicott. The view of personality or humanity is really this idea of churning intrapsychic forces. Obviously, Freud talked about the id, ego, and superego, and that developed um, as Adler and Erickson um, and others came along. But there's a sense of um, a dynamic happening inside of a person that relates to a lot of complex emotions happening. And there's also this idea that humans are beings that move through a set um, of developmental stages that are kind of pre-outlined and we all move through them. Now, a view of pathology would be an imbalance or a conflict of all of these intrapsychic forces and or disrupted development. So again, all of these theorists had their own little spin, but in general, a psychodynamic theory is looking at childhood development and they're looking at kind of the, the subconscious intrapsychic forces. So their view of health would be balance in those intrapsychic forces and successful progression through developmental stages. And finally, some of their therapeutic strategies include catharsis, free association, dream analysis, developing ego strength, acting as if, and exploration of early memories and childhood experiences. Next, we have cognitive behavioral theories. And here, these were developed in the 1950s and 60s. And for the third wave of cognitive behavioral therapy, that's been about the 1990s to the present. Some key figures include Pavlov, Skinner, Meekenbaum, Ellis, Beck, Hayes, and Linehan. The view of personality is that really with behaviorists, um, a human was a blank slate that could be conditioned. Obviously, we don't really hold that 
fully today in, in cognitive behavioral therapy. Now we're looking at a person or being who can choose and change their thinking, feeling, and behavior. So there's a little bit more understanding of the cognition element than the early behaviorists would have had. The view of pathology would be, you know, pathology would be the result of childhood conditioning, um, poor parenting, negative childhood experiences, those kinds of things. Um, but not in the same way as the psychodynamic theorists where early childhood memories and that kind of thing, as opposed to conditioning in childhood would be something where one thing got paired or linked to, uh, you know, a certain stimulus. And so that would be a little bit different take on that idea, conditioning versus um, kind of the impact on your psyche. Um, obviously, another aspect of pathology for cognitive behavioral theorists is cognitive distortions. So um, catastrophizing or um, negative self-talk, seeing um, the world in a negative light and attributing um, kind of connections, uh, overgeneralization, that kind of thing. Um, so that you essentially feel powerless to change them. So a view of health would be acceptance of your circumstances, of what's happening around you, of your reality, um, cognitive flexibility, where you're able to identify those cognitive distortions, um, be able to see the world in a different way from a different perspective. And then you would have productive behaviors that are fueled by that rational thinking and your regulated emotions. So therapeutic strategies would include operant conditioning, exposure therapies, cognitive restructuring or thought countering, um, and then modern therapies in the third wave like acceptance and commitment therapy, dialectic behavior therapy, um, and things like mindfulness, relaxation, and positive self-talk. Humanistic theories came along in the 1960s to about the 1980s, and key figures include Maslow, Rogers, Miller and Rolnick, who were the founders of um, motivational interviewing, Rollo May, Tillich, Frankel, and Pearls. And those last ones are um, the existential theorists, which I've combined here with humanism. Their view of personality and humanity is that the person is a self that has a real has real relational and ex existential needs. And we move from a lesser form of self to a fully actualized self. And that's a process that we are all in the midst of. So their view of pathology would be if there was a lack of unconditional positive regard, certainly Rogers would say that that would be um, a significant cause of psychopathology, poor self-concept, or unmet relational and existential needs. Certainly Maslow's hierarchy of needs comes to mind here. And um, certainly the existential theorists would, would look to that as well. Now, a view of health would be when your physical, emotional, and spiritual needs are met and kind of a realization of this process of self-actualization. So you become the true self. And so your therapeutic strategies would include empathy, genuineness, unconditional positive regard, exploration of meaning, um, kind of the meaning of life, and then gestalt therapy, which would work on awareness, unfinished business, and wholeness. Postmodern theories have come along in the mid-1980s to the present, and key figures include Greenberg, Johnson, um, who did emotion-focused therapy, um, Berg, Michael White, who was um, central to narrative therapy, and Watchell. A view of personality and humanity certainly has a much more multicultural, experiential, and gender-focused idea with postmodern theories. There's, uh, there would be an emphasis on things like intersectionality of identity, privilege, and also things like problem solving. So a view of pathology would involve a poor sense of identity, um, which would include oppression or oppressive systems that you need to kind of overcome and work through in order to find your, your sense of identity and um, certainly dysregulation as a result of all of that. I think postmodern theories would be much more likely to look at um, kind of de um, social determinants of health and things like that in terms of understanding the complex uh, reasons that people become unwell. And so their view of health would be um, kind of an internalized, organized narrative that embraces all of the aspects of your identity. Um, it would be strength-based, empowered problem-solving. So someone who is able to 
see who they are, who their what their strengths are, and that they can take reality right now and, um, you know, kind of in a solution focused sense, solve their problems. So therapeutic strategies would involve storytelling. Certainly narrative therapy would emphasize that. Cultural identity development, problem solving, affect regulation, and meaning making. Now a final slide here on Christian integration, and this is adapted from Eric Johnson's um, Psychology and Christianity, Five Views. Um, and here I just made a chart that basically kind of shows a little bit of where these five Christian views would fit in with some of the, the, the four themes that we just talked about. Um, and so levels of explanation would probably lean a little bit more towards the CBT kind of idea, but maybe understanding the psychodynamic in the sense of early childhood experiences and human development. Um, but it's this idea that problems are going to be explained in a variety of different ways. Sometimes some problems are spiritual problems and those can be explained one way. Um, some things, you know, they might have more of a disease model of mental illness. So that can be explained that way. And so that's where that would fall. Um, in integration, I have X's across the whole thing because basically it's taking any of these ideas and really bringing it into alignment and connection with a Christian faith. Christian psychology, I put more towards the postmodern end, only in the sense that um, they believe that Christians should be developing their own psychology. And so while they might not agree with postmodernism per se, it's really most similar to the postmodern um, theories um, in that it's developing from a sense of identity. Um, transformational um, would probably fall more into the humanistic category. I think that's really an emphasis on kind of the inner existential experience of the of the therapist um, and also the the kind of process of change that happens relationally and so that's um, something that transformational um, view would have in line with humanism and then the biblical view i put a question mark by cbt only because i think there is some elements of behaviorism kind of undergirding this idea of um, nuthetic counseling or kind of confrontation um, but ultimately a biblical view would, you know, reject all of these different types of theories and really um, tie in kind of specifically what the Bible has to say as the only thing that needs to define who humans are and what um, pathology or sin would be and um, health being found um, in kind of salvation through Christ. So that would be the biblical view. Hope this has been helpful and I'll see you next time.